painting with a spoon well hello art friends and welcome to my channel it's Dina Tollefson and I'm so glad that you're here today so I'm applying this is acrylic paint and the technique that you see here this art technique is called Daubism for the thick slabs of acrylic paint that is applied with spoons and with palette knives so I'm putting on here, um, I've got uh, acrylic that I've mixed up using phthalo blue red shade and some titanium white and a little touch of yellow ochre and adding these little daubs onto the canvas. We'll get a mark there, there we go. So uh, in today's video, I want to uh, talk a little bit about this painting and then also take you on a super fun field trip to Clobeck Koi Farm. Um, which is in Amana, Iowa, and that's about 45 minutes from where from where I live here in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Now this next blue that you see here is a, um, a mixture using, uh, the other one was Thalo Blue Red Shade with um, a little bit of um, titanium white. And then now this blue, this blue that looks more purplish, um, I got that blue by mixing uh, French ultramarine with titanium white and a little bit of the orange and the reason I'm adding the orange is to dull the color down and make it so it's not too bright so let's take a little bit of the primary yellow and the um, which one is that that's the French ultramarine and we can mix up kind of a really wonderful green blue color a deep rich green blue color little bit bright so I'm going to add in some yellow ochre to kind of uh, make the color so it's not so not too bold it needs to dull down a little bit and let's hold that up to here to the canvas and yeah that's the look we're looking for there we go and let's get some marks here on the lily pads just building up those layers of color I'm back in the um, you might notice that the um, surface I'm working with here I've got a Masterson stay wet palette that I'm using and that helps keep my acrylic paints from drying out it keeps them at just the right moisture level okay now going over to the palette knife let's get some of that darker color that we mixed up and get that over onto the Lily pads, you can see that it seems like there's a little bit of gray mixed in it, and that's because when we added the yellow ochre, that it gave a grayed appearance or it grays down the color. And it's nice to have a mix of brights and grays, brights and dulls and darks and lights. That contrast, if everything is all bright or everything is all dull, it's not as exciting as it is if you have a mix of colors in my opinion. So koi are a really favorite subject of mine and um, so Bill and I live on a um, on our um, in our yard in the backyard there is a two acre um, pond uh, and we have some koi in it. So um, this koi were stocked and we also have grass carp and some other fish in there lots of frogs lots of turtles and this pond is extremely inspiring to me seeing um, all the animals and all of the fishes and the frogs and the turtles um, we've got soft shell turtle we have snapping turtle painted turtles um, and um, I I'm hoping that we also have Blanding's turtles but um, but these animals and the insects and, and the water and everything it makes such a wonderful habitat and just a real big inspiration for me in my work now let's add a little bit using a really narrow knife let's get a few marks here extend the tail a little bit the tail was a little bit short on this fish let's extend the feeling of the tail out there and a little bit like a sense of movement get some highlights on there do the same thing here too. Let's get a uh, build up the top layer of light on this lightest color fish. Okay, 
Okay, let's get a little pyrrole orange onto the palette. And mix in some of that titanium white. And interestingly, when you mix orange and white together, you get kind of a, um, almost a pink kind of color. It's an interesting, interesting that orange does not go, um, when, when orange is mixed with white, it, it gives almost kind of a salmon or a pink color. And you'll see that when I put this up here, right on there next, on the fish, you can kind of see it's, it's, um, it's a really neat color that you can mix. Get a little bit here on the top. And back here at the back of the fish. Now coming in with phthalo blue red shade plus a small amount of titanium white and a very tiny amount of yellow ochre. Now with a spoon, let's add in some dark, deep dark shadow areas where the fish have cast a shadow. So this Clobec uh, Koi Farm um, that I'm going to take you to here on this video, um, I've, uh, we've been going there for years to get some koi that we've stocked into the pond. And um, I'll say that they, this, uh, the Clobec Koi Farm, they have, oh my goodness, the fish there are just so beautiful and so vital. And it's such an inspiration and so much fun to go there and to pick out the new fish. So sadly, we do have some predation with animals um, coming to eat the koi out of the pond, which is sad. <laughs> and so some of them survive and some of them don't. Sometimes I guess snapping turtles will get them. Um, we know that um, eagles, so we have bald eagles in the area. Bald eagles have gone fishing for koi. Um, great blue heron have gone fishing. Um, and then also sometimes a raccoon might be able to get one. Now this kind of purple color, I've uh, mixed diaxazine purple with some of the French ultramarine and a small amount of titanium white to get um, a variety of colors. So we have a yellow, kind of a yellow blue, and then now we have more of a purple blue. And I like that play of um, warm versus cool in the shadows and in the areas in sunlight. We'll get a mark right there. There we go. So here's the painting, Koi is our joy, and drying on the easel. So now I want to take you over to Klobeck, um Koi Farm. And here's a view of their outdoor ponds. They have lots of outdoor areas where they're growing their fish. But come on inside with me, and you can see all the different areas.
These are some of our brood stock. These are mamas. Um, you can kind of tell that their bellies are swollen with eggs because it's that time of year. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we're just starting the process of um, spotting. So these girls will be moved up to the hatchery pretty soon. And they're paired strategically with certain males, of course, to get certain results, certain babies. Yeah. So these are more mamas in here. And how old would you say some of these koi are? Um, some of them are older than 10 years. None of them are ancient. Okay. These are some of the size of the, in the pond that we have now. Really this Ours big? Have gotten, yeah, and some even a little bit bigger, than, like these big ones here, like this guy here. Okay. This is like the size of what oh we have gosh, in the I orange. They've gotten huge. That, you know, when somebody purchases one, yes. you know where to find it. Yeah, Otherwise, okay. it'd be so hard. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, for the photos. Yeah, yep. you bet. You bet. This is our uh, newest building. This has allowed us to keep fish indoors over winter. Oh. So we keep feeding them, we keep growing them, and then it also eliminates oh. the rest of the otters and right. things like that. Yeah. Right. Because we've had otters visit this before too. This is all new since I've been here last. Snorbush is what do you call it? The um, 
mustache. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, perfect. Ready, but actually yeah. Is it blooming? Your yellow cone flower? Yes. Ah, uh, yes, here they are. And then maybe hold it up if we can see. Well, right, we'll try. All right, here's one. Oh. There it is in the water. I see it. Oops, they're quite squirmy. They are. There's another. Uh huh. Yeah, when you hold one, then I'll let. Uh, when you hold it up, let me see. Okay. Whoops. And some are, um, some are, uh, they, some have scales and some don't. Okay, they would all have scales. Well, some okay. have like what Larger they call scales. skin instead of. Huh, they like really small scales. Yeah. Thank you so much, my art club members. I appreciate you.